Welcome back. We're going to be doing some example problems and this first one, uh, I'll just do one first and then because it usually takes about 10 minutes and then we'll get another one done. But this one, we have a little box and it has a mass of two kilos and it is sliding down a, a little plane of some kind uh, and there is friction and so we'll have to take that into account. Uh, we're going to try to calculate what it takes for the just the the minimum amount necessary for us to put here to pull that little box up the plane. So uh, I've went ahead and I drew uh, this little uh, diagram here so that we could easily break down all the forces and label everything that we know and uh, it, it's always a good idea in these kind of mechanics problems to, to draw the picture, label what you know, and then put out, say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and do that. And go ahead and use this as a, a kind of uh, just a, a picture that you use for all these types. You won't always need every single vector that I put out or... Uh, you might modify things a bit, but it's a it's a good starting point. Let's take a look at what we can do then. <clears throat> I have a bit of a cold. Sorry about that. All right. We know some things. We know that it has a constant velocity. Now, a constant velocity means something. It means it is not accelerating, and that means something. It means that the force of friction, which I've done F, F, has to be equal to this that I've labeled F1. Because this F1, it, is, it comes essentially from gravity. The Earth pulls on this, the vector breaks down a bit, and you get this F1 component that wants the box to go down the hill. Now the friction, it's pointing in the other direction, and that is because friction always fights the direction of motion. So if the box were sliding, <laughs> sliding up the hill, the friction would be pointing down the hill. If you're on a flat table and you're pushing a box in one direction, the friction is pointing in the other direction. So that's a, a good thing to remember because we're going to need that. Now, another point is when this equals this, uh, it's because they're in opposite directions, you, you have a, a kind of zero-sum game going on. Even though the box is moving, and it is, and it's with a constant speed, there's no net force on it in the direction of motion. So, let's take the next page here. Let's, let's do some calculations just a little bit here. Okay, you see here that I, I've put the, the angle down as 20. Uh, I, I drew in some of these little yellow boxes here. I'm just going to highlight them a bit. This was the mg, so the, the mass of the box times g, and that's, that's this, this big red line here. And we need to find out this. And we know from geometry, we, we remember from math b, that if you have things divided up. If, if this is perpendicular, which it is, in other words, it's going to build a 90 degree angle to this plane, and it's part of a triangle, then this and this, well, I didn't draw that very well, will both be 20 degrees, just like the, the one in the small corner of the triangle there. <clears throat> when we know that, it's going to be really easy to then find out what this is. We just need to use the little sine or cosine, depending on which angle you tend to be looking at here. Uh, and, in, and in this case, it's, it's pretty easy. We're just taking the, the sine like I showed you before. Uh, now, we know this. Uh, we're not really going to need this at all. So when we clean up our picture a bit, and I'll do that momentarily, you'll see that it, it's not going to play a part in our uh, connecting of the dots, as it were. 
But here we go. We have 6.7 uh, newtons of force uh, here and here. Now, they're pulling in opposite directions. So if you pull here with 6.7 and there with 6.7, they're going to take each other out. But the box is still moving. Okay, it's, and it's moving to the left. However, now the question is, now that we know this, we need to take the next step and uh, find out, well, what do we need to actually pull the box up? What is the minimum amount required before it starts going up the hill? All right, let's take a look at this. We're going to call the, the force that we need to pull it up the hill this brown F right here. Uh, and to be consistent, I, I made that one uh, the, the force that we're pulling down with, and that's here. And then the friction, you'll notice it is pointing in the other direction now. Because we're trying to pull the box up, and that means that the friction is going to say, nuh -uh, you're going to go the other direction. <laughs> However you're moving, the friction is like, no. And it wants to go the other way. So now that we know that, and we know that the force of friction was going to be equal to the gravitational force, which hasn't changed because we're still on Earth. We haven't gone to the moon. We haven't gone to Mars. We still have G. So this force is there, and the force of friction was what we calculated earlier. So we put those together, and that gives us F, which is 13.4. So it's, it's not that bad once you get used to it. You, you'll have to do a few of these. You'll have to learn absolutely to label everything. Use this as a kind of a map or something to, to remember. Okay, I might need the normal force. Let's put it down if I've got it. Let's uh, label the mass and, and we'll find out what gravity is doing. We'll put in our angles. We'll, if we have friction available, we'll put it there. And Sometimes they'll say it'll slide down and you won't need the friction. But regardless, what, whatever the conditions are, label it and draw a picture. You always need a picture with these. All right, we'll work on the board.